Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about volume of three-dimensional prisms and specifically talking about triangular prisms and circle prisms which are called cylinders. So in the last video we talked about what defines a prism and we defined what the cross-section is and how to find the area and then multiply that by the depth or the height which then gives us volume. So just to refresh, volume is the amount of physical space that a three-dimensional object takes up. So the formula that we looked at last time was the area of the cross-section times our height. If you need a review, just go back to that video. So looking at cylinders, using that same formula, we know that the area of a cross-section is actually going to be a circle. So if we were to look at a water bottle, for example, that's a cylinder, if you were to cut that at the front every single time, your shape would be a circle. So that's why our volume of our cross-section is the area of a circle. And just a reminder, the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. So using that, we always find our area first, multiply it by our height, and then we can find the volume of that shape. So if we're looking at this particular cylinder here that's just laying down, so we're looking at a shape that's just like this, we want to find the volume or the amount of physical space um, that that shape is taking up. So our first step is we find the area. So for this shape, we're actually given the diameter here, so we need to find the radius. So if my diameter, which is the distance across the centre of the circle from one end to the other, is 27.4, my radius is half of that, which gives me a radius of 13.7 centimetres. So from there we can work out that our area of this particular shape, the cross section, is area is pi times my radius squared, 13.7 squared. Okay, Putting that into my calculator, I can work that out. But essentially, we can actually all do it in one in one go. So if we know that volume is area times height, your height or your depth of this is 0.5. Now, our issue here is that they're in different units, so we'd have to change them so they're in the same unit. It actually doesn't matter. I prefer to change the uh, bigger unit to the smaller unit. So if I convert that to centimetres, I know I'm going to get 50 centimetres. So putting that all in one, my volume would be my area, which is here, pi times 13.7 squared, multiplied by 50, which is the depth or the height of that shape. Putting that into our calculator, we actually get 29,482. We usually do it to about two decimal places. We get 276, so 276, if I cut that off there, that's five or above, so I give that a shove. That's going to become 2.8. So it would be 29,482.28. We are in centimetres and we know it's cubic units because we are dealing with volume. Okay, so just to break that up a bit more, we're still using this exact same formula, but I've just decided to put it all in one. The main reason being is when you're dealing with pi, you're actually dealing with rounding, and if we round off, we actually are changing the answer by quite a bit. So the accuracy of our answer um, diminishes, essentially, the more that we round it. So if we put it all at once into our calculator, so if we look at this part here, that part right there is our A. That's our area of our cross-section, which is still our formula. Then we're multiplying it by our height or our depth, put it all into one, and you should get that as your rounded answer, okay? So there's your working out for that one. We're going to now look at this shape over here. So same thing, but now we've got it standing up. The only difference, I guess, is apart from its orientation is that we're actually given the radius this time. We're actually given the center to the outside, which means our radius straight away is nine. So again, you can go find your area, which we know is pi times radius squared, but we can just put it all in one. So volume, let's do the area part. So area is pi times radius squared, which is nine squared. So that's the A part, which is this part here. Then I'm going to multiply that by the height or the depth, which is 25 in this case. Putting that all into your calculator, you should get 6361.7251, something, something, something. We usually round it off to two decimal places. So I'm going to cut it off after the two and look at the third digit. Five or above means that two shoves up and I round up. So it becomes 6,361.73. We are in, sorry, this one here. We are in metres 
cubed because we're looking at cubic units. Okay, so that's looking at our cylinders. We're now going to be looking at our triangular prism, again, using the exact same concept, okay? So just while I erase all this, I want you to have a look at that and think about what is the shape I see at the cross section. Sorry, that should be major. What is the shape I see in my cross section of my triangular prism if I were to cut that? So what do I need to replace this part with, okay? So just have a think about that and I'll erase this so that we can put our working out on. All right. Now, some people might say, can I make this side the cross section? Well, no, because if you cut it, it's actually going to change shape and change size. You need to find the part of that prism that if you were to slice it, you will see that same shape every time. If you were to slice it on the top, it's actually going to get into a, a rectangle that's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? So if we look at this shape here, the face of the shape or my cross-sectional face would be a triangle right there. So we need to remember the area of a triangle formula, which is half times your base times your perpendicular height. So your height, that is 90 degrees to your base, okay? So that's this one that's given right here. So let's look at our triangle first of all. So we know that volume is the area of the cross section, which is a triangle times the height or the depth, okay? So replacing that A, let's fill all of this in. So I'm just looking at the face of that. So half, now the base is this six here. Now the number or the line that is perpendicular to that, that five doesn't give us any use at all. We don't want the slant height. We want the one that gives us a T shape, okay? So it makes a bit of a T and is perpendicular to the base. So in this case, my perpendicular height is four. So this part right here you found is your A. All of this right here is your A. Now that you've found your area, again, it's just easier to put it into your calculator all at once. We multiply it by the depth or the height, essentially this one here. So think of the line. What is that extra dimension that makes that 3D? And that's 12 metres. So we multiply that by 12, okay? So working that out, half of 6, 3, 3 times 4, and all of that in your calculator, you would get 144 metres cubed, okay? So making sure we recognise what the face of the shape is, finding the area of the correct of that correct face, and then multiplying it by the height to find volume.